The following broadcast is a presentation of Mount Zion Media Ministry. What are you going to do when they come for you? Amen. That's what I want to talk about. What are you going to do when they come for, for you? I want to help all of us, including me, to be ready. For some of us, um, they have already come. And so this is going to help us uh, examine how we've been responding uh, to what is going on. And for some of us, it will prepare us for the next time that they come after us. And I want to say to everybody in here, including the children, and it may not apply to you yet because you've got some parents who protect you from certain things, but even with that, there are times when your peers or something or somebody will come after you. And in deciding on the subject, I was very careful not to say what to do if they come for you, because I would leave you with the impression that somehow you might be exempt. But I don't want to deceive you as your pastor. I, I, I carefully chose what to do when. Because it's just a matter of time. And some of you are, are real good people. And you are close to the Lord. And, and you often question God. And you ask others, why me? Why me? Why, why does this happen to me? Why do they come after me. Well, I, I, I want to help you with that. Uh, sometimes they come after you, after me, because we do things to provoke them. Sometimes our wrong make them come after us. But then there are other times when it has nothing to do with our behavior, whether it's right or wrong. And here is what I mean. Sometimes they come after you because of who you belong to. You see, they are afraid of who you belong to. They know they can't handle who you belong to. And yet they hate who you belong to. And so to hurt him, and I'm talking about God, those of you that belong to God. And so to hurt God, they hurt you. See, this is the, the idea. Uh, it, it would take a lot, a lot for somebody to say something or do something to me personally at this point in my life to hurt me because I have a healthy disregard for other people's opinions or action. But now if you went after one of my children and you hurt them, it's a whole new ball game. I might have to remind you. Okay, I won't remind you of that. <laughs> and so the enemy goes after us sometimes because he wants to hurt God. And, and to do that, he, he, he hurts us. He, he breaks us down. Sometimes it's because as a child of God, you bring light. You bring right into places out in the world and the world which the Bible identifies as being the place of darkness it hates the light and the light exposes the wrong the wickedness and so there's a desire to shut the light out and so they come after you and it's not personal but it's because you got light 
and if, they, and if they can get rid of the light, then they can continue to do what they do in the dark and nobody ever knows. Sometimes they come after you and young people, this applies to you too because you're different. And the Bible tells us that we ought to be different and, and people don't like different. And so they make you feel, or they try to make you feel bad because you're different. And for those of us who decide that we want to be a leader, that we want to be out front in any capacity, let me tell you what happens. The moment you decide that you want to step out front, you become a target. You put a target on your back and your chest and sometimes on your head. And people are going to throw darts at you, throw rocks at you, simply because of your position out front. One more reason, and there are many more, but let me just throw this one out, out at you. Sometimes they come after you because they are insecure. And because they are insecure, they create in their mind this monstrous person called you. And I'm like Reverend Edmondson, I just made that word up. They make you evil. They make you the enemy. They say all stuff about you. And really, it's not about you. It's about their own insecurities. And it makes them feel better to cut you off. To vilify you. To mess with you. And I said I was through, but Holy Ghost just brought one more thing to my mind that I need to say. And sometimes people come at you because they have the power to do so. They've got the power to do it. They just do it. And when they do it, it's to their advantage. Now, let me um, ask you to show you something in this text, and I'm on my way out. Um, David here is sharing with us, in retrospect, an experience that he had when they came after him. Listen at at the language here. David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He's the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? There's there these questions in his mind about what he needs to fear or be afraid of. And listen, he says, when the wicked, that's they, even my enemies, they, even my foes, they came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fail. Then he says, though an host should encamp against me. So he, he uses these pronouns or personifications to talk about they. He describes the day as the wicked, mine enemies, my foes, and then this large group that encamps against me. And that's the idea that they surround me and just sit there waiting to get me. Now, when I was growing up, I used to get in trouble. All of my peers, we would get in, my sisters and brothers, we'd get in trouble. And we, and we were trying to get ourselves out. And so we, we'd go to my daddy, because, you know, he's, he was a disciplinary. And we start trying to, you know, justify. Dad, I, 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 I didn't mean to do it. They, they were bothering me. Daddy, they hit me first. Daddy, they made me. Daddy, they, they. And, and daddy would just say, uh, hold up, they who? Tell me who they are or shut up about they. And, and daddy had a point that I didn't get then, and, and here's part of the point daddy make. You, you, you really can't deal with your foe until you give it a name. And so this, this broad term we use, they, you, you are not ready to defeat they until you name they. Because you can't understand they until you identify who they are. So I need you to just think for a minute about T-H-E-Y, they. Who in the past, who are they that came after you? Take a moment, write, a, write the name down. Write the organization down, write, write the group. 
just, just, just right. Give day a name. And sometimes day is a person, but sometimes day is an emotion that comes and invades your privacy and causes you to fear and tremble. And so start naming your day and, and, and keep your pen in, in your hand or keep your, um, your finger you know, on your little device because as a preacher may think of some more day and you're going to need to um, have it because I'm going to help you with, with day before the sermon is over. And so David didn't name it specifically, so he, but, but he, 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 he talks about his enemies. And now, when you read Psalm 27, what, what you discover is that David has victory over day. And I wanted to know from David, how can we get the same kind of victory that you have over day? And so here it is. Number one, what you see in the text is that David has a perspective about his situation that empowers him and not paralyze him. Perspective about your situation will either empower you or paralyze you. Your situation, whoever they are, whatever the day is, that come after you depends upon you and your perspective to win. Because if you are afraid of day, if you are paralyzed by the thought of day even coming after you, if you get so afraid, so paralyzed, if you don't have a comeback, then they know that you are defenseless and they can do what they want to do to you. But if you are prepared for day, and if you look at day and you see day in the proper perspective, you can handle them. If, if um, somebody hollered snake in this row right here, some people will break their necks getting out of here. But there are some people will say, where? Let me see it. And somebody who has the nerve, who's not afraid, who's no snakes, will go over there, identify the snake. Oh, that's not a rattler. That's not a poison snake. That's old little rat snake. That ain't going to hurt nobody. Pick the snake up, take him out, throw him in the yard. Same snake, but a different response because of perspective. I'm looking at Sheldon Johnson right now. If somebody holler, they got a gun. Some of y'all are going to start ducking and running, and I'm, and, and I'm going to duck right here. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you where it is, but Sheldon going to look for you, and then he got something on him in a certain spot, and he's going to take it out and take you out before you get to shoot. And she has to put you on the spot, so, but just still keep your eye on them in case they come. <laughs> and, and, and so it's about perspective. And so it's all in how you look at. And, and, and I heard some people here recently talk about various situations that are happening in Albany right now um, because they have come after some folk. And, and, and I hear them saying, there's nothing we can do. Really? They can't be touched. Really? They are going to do what they want to do anyway. Really? They will do it because you reconcile and resign yourself to a powerless. So if, if you feel powerless, if you feel weak, then certainly your enemy will run over you. So you got to know how to how to, how to do this. And so, and listen at, at David's perspective. I see my enemies, I see my foes, I see these wicked people, but um, I am not afraid. Why? Because look at my perspective. Look at who I got on my side. He says, I know who they are. I know what they're capable of. But the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Who should I fear? 
Then he said, the Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of who should I be afraid? And David looks at me, I see y'all. I know what you're bringing, but I'm not scared. I am empowered because of who God is and what he is to me. And because he is my light, it makes me wiser. I can figure out what you're up to. Um, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say this. You, 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 you're not going to spray something on me and tell me it's water when I know it's a mess. I'm wiser because the Lord is my light. He, he, he opens things up to me. I see behind your words. I see your motives. I, I see what it is you really, I hear what you say, but I really know what you mean. And so, I'm not afraid of you. Salvation. That word salvation means deliverer. Exodus 14, Moses, children of Israel, on their way to freedom. Army, Pharaoh's army is behind them. The sea in front of mountains on both sides. They feel they have no way to escape their perspective we're doomed they're crying they're criticizing Moses for bringing them out and then God speaks and says in essence you got the wrong perspective let me show you something stand still and see the salvation the deliverance of the Lord and the Lord made a way for them and so David is not waiting on the Lord to say that to him David already know the Lord is my salvation he's my stronghold and when you have that perspective, you know who God is and you know what he is to you and because he is your light, your salvation, your stronghold, that has empowered you. You're not weak and you have power and so bring it on. You wicked people, come on, I got something for you. Enemies, come on, I, I got something for you. Foes, come on, I got something for you. Go on and camp around my house, stay out there all night. Camp at my job. Stay there all you want to, but I got something for you. And you don't intimidate me by just sitting around looking at me. Anybody ever been in a situation where, where, where folk try to intimidate you? And so, and, and so David has the right perspective, and you have got to get the right perspective about your problem. We had a tornado um, a few weeks ago, and the perspective of some people is that I lost everything. The perspective of others, I've lost this, but now I got an opportunity to get more and come back better. Amen. And then there were people who said, here's a situation where people need help. And they came to this town, and people in this town, they came to help. But then somebody else's perspective was, here's an opportunity for me to go to a city and exploit people. Here's an opportunity for me. I live in this city, but I'm going to take advantage of this situation. I'm going to exploit these people who are hurting and poor. So it's all about perspective. And then here's the second thing, and this is not in the text, but this comes out of the life of David. When you look at the life of David, David had a lot of battles, a lot of enemies, a lot of foes. And what you discover is uh, that because of David's perspective and knowing who God is, David would pray and seek the Lord. And out of that prayer and seeking God, David will come out with a plan for his uh, attack, for his response to whoever the enemy, the foe was. And I'm saying to you that you get the right perspective and then you pray and you seek God for the right response. And, 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 and that response has to be a plan of action that you use to, to defend yourself against the enemy's attack. Because catch this. When they come after you, they got a plan. And it behooves you, it behooves me to have a plan as well. And in fact, it behoove, behooves us to be proactive since we know they are coming. And God has given us wisdom and so forth and so we know what to do. We ought to start preparing now before they come to be ready. If I, was, if I were young again and I know what I know now 
and I was just in the workforce, I would be positioning myself so that when they come, I'll be better prepared. And there are two areas in particular I would begin to position myself so that I wouldn't have to be helpless at the hands of they when they come. If I knew what I knew, if I know now, all right, what I know now, if I knew back then, I wouldn't have rushed out to buy a lot of stuff that I thought I had to have needed or stuff that I bought to impress people that I'm a baller now, I got this good job. I would have delayed all of that so that I had me some reserve. So when they come after me, I don't have to take anything or be afraid because even if I go to the house, even if I get a demotion, I got me something laid back so I don't have to bite my tongue for fear that I would lose my income because I got God as a source, but I got a little something to fall back on. I can, I can go to Maryland Fried Chicken and get me a box if I can't do I can still pay my mortgage. I can still. And I'd be careful how I treat people. Because sometimes when you're young and you just get there, and, you know, especially if you get there and you're doing pretty well, you start looking at folk a little different. You know, you think you. Let me tell you something. Those folk up there with you that think like that, when they, when they cut you, some of those folk you look over may have to help you so you don't, you don't ever, ever, ever know. You don't ever know. Better be nice to the security people on, on your way in that gate. Better drop their head out there and say, good morning, how you doing? Look at me. Better be glad that that man more in the yards out there. You don't, you don't know. Because you don't, don't think because he's more than yours. He don't know anything, don't have anything. Don't, don't, don't let that fool you. He may have to f feed you one day. And so, and, and so just, just be careful how you preach. And let me speed up because I, I, need, to, I need to get on. And, and, so, and so pray and, and get a plan. And so, and then here's the next thing that's in this text. And it's um, proclamation, proclamation. David was proclaiming some things to himself to encourage himself. Uh, people do this today in certain Pentecostal circles, but they call it declarations, decrees. So you have to make some declarations, some decrees about some things. And so what David is doing is proclaiming out loud who God is and who he is and his response. And so when David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation, David is saying that out loud to himself, reminding himself. David is saying out loud because here, here, here it is. Because um, when they come after you, it may not be an instantaneous deliverance. And so while you are operating with the right perspective, you prayed and you got a plan, you got to walk through and work that plan. And while you're walking through and working that plan, they're still coming after you. And it's very easy while you're walking through working the plan for circumstances to look real bad. And if you're not careful, the circumstances will overpower you and you get depressed and you get discouraged and you just feel like giving up. And then you get impatient because it's been a month and I've been, you know, working this plan and, and I know God told me, but, but you know, and, and look like I'm going to lose my job anyway. Look like I'm going to lose... Look like I'm going to lose my wife. Look like I'm going to use, use my, lose my husband. Stuff just gonna, is not going to work out. Look like my enemy is going to win. And so you're going through this, and, uh, and it looked like, looked like it's going against you. And people are not encouraging you because, listen, listen, because when they come after you and it looked like you might lose, folk back off from you. I had someone, close, I had someone to, to send me a text today and said, I feel... Um, so isolated at this point in my life. I am so low. All of my friends have turned their back on me. I'm as low as I've ever been because when that person got in trouble, folk he thought was for him, all of a sudden, them. <laughs> Turn 
turn their back on him. And I told him that, I told him early, don't, don't give attention to what, what they say. Because as soon as things make a turn, they're going to turn on you. And, and, so, and so what David is saying, when it get like that, what you got to do is encourage your, and let me, let, and let me go back, let me, but, but, but before I leave that, and what you got to understand, the, the same one that be, you know, putting, turning back on you, um, they worse off than you. <laughs> That's a whole different story there. So, so anyway, and, and so what you have to do because nobody else will is encourage yourself. So you make these proclamations. You get up in the morning. The Lord is my life. And you got to say this stuff out loud. Write it down. Get the book. Whatever it is. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I fear? And this is where your list come in. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will not fear. And then you put the name of day right there. And you say that out loud every day. Put it up on the mirror. Stand in the bathroom. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will not fear depression. I will not fear grief. I will not fear divorce. I will not fear enemies. I will not fear unemployment. I will not fear a, a national government that cares nothing about poor and disenfranchised people. I will not fear people who don't care if I have health insurance or not, who don't care about pre-existing conditions. I know a God who knows my condition. I don't care about local government, mayors and, and boards who don't care about poor people but care about protecting the income and the wealth of the rich on the back of the poor because God will take care of me. And you got to say that to yourself. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a, there's a move going on. You know, if you're poor, if you don't vote politically, you don't have power, you're in trouble. And see, some of us have been deceived. You, you just think it's Trump. But it's city government, it's county government. See, people got money, they don't like taxes. And so, to appease them, and people got power, got, they don't like taxes. So to appease them, the government don't raise taxes uh, in an open way. So what they do is, they add fees. And they raise fees. And they raise the shortfall from the taxes on, by raising fees. And the people who can afford the least to pay the fees are the ones who end up paying them. And the folk who can't afford to pay, they raise fees, don't help them. And many times they got a way to get out of it.